Real forgiveness is always costly. My dear brothers and sisters, today's gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 to 35. It is the concluding section of the instructions Matthew gives to the early Christian community, instructing them how to live their life in a community. Especially, he stresses on the point of forgiveness. Yes, the gospel passage today begins with that Peter's question. Peter comes to Jesus and asks this question, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him as many as seven times? In answering to Peter, our Lord says, Seventy times seven. Well, when Peter came to the Lord, he must have thought, I am forgiving seven times, that is much beyond what is demanded of rabbinical rule. According to the rabbis, Jewish rabbis, they need to forgive someone who has offended their particular sin three times. Now Peter has exceeded that seven times. But the Lord gives the response, 70 times 7. While this 70 times 7 could be taken as 70 times or 490 times. The translation of the original Greek could mean that. Whatever it may be, the Lord says unlimited forgiveness, ongoing forgiveness. Commenting on this, St. John Chrysostom says, Our Lord did not limit forgiveness to a fixed number, but declared that it must be continuous and forever. And in order to bring out this point clearly, stress this point clearly, Jesus gives the parable of the unforgiving servant. And in the parable we see, the king had a servant who owed him 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents is an enormous money. One talent would be equal to 6,000 denarii. And when he is asked to pay the debt, he comes, prostrates, begs before the master. The master had actually ordered until he pays back all that he has to be sold, his wife and children be put in the jail and when he prostrates, the master has compassion on him and he completely writes off the debt. And he is free, but when he is on his way home, he meets one of his debtors who owed him just hundred denarii. What did he do? He catches him by throat. He ill-treats him, puts him in the prison. And when this is brought to the king, the king puts him in the prison and he scans over him to the torturers until every penny is paid. My dear brothers and sisters, we know here very well who is the king? The king is our Lord. We all are sinners. We have an enormous debt to pay. Yet, he has carried upon himself our debts. He poured out his life for us and paid the debt for us. And he wants us to forgive our brothers and sisters in the way he has forgiven us. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, many a times we who are sinners, we who need God's mercy, unconditional forgiveness are not prepared to forgive our brothers and sisters. We nurture grudge in us, 
we continue for years as pope francis in one of his homily said even at the funeral you see children who are at the parents funeral don't talk to each other we have come across families who have not talked to each other for days years and yet god forgives our sins yes god invites us to a wholehearted forgiveness and it is only then we will be living a life in the lord we will be living a life which god wants us to live as the letter to the romans reminds us my dear brothers and sisters for unforgiveness is a severe block in our lives it blocks god's grace in our personal lives in our families in our communities jesus tells us wherever two or three are gathered in my name i am there wherever two or three are gathered in my name in love i am there but what is the situation of our families our communities people do not talk to each other people do not look at one another's face and we come to pray we live in under the same roof how can god's grace god's spirit dwell in such places my dear brothers and sisters in today's first reading taken from the book of sirach chapter 27 30 and following we hear does a man harbor anger against another and yet seek for healing from the lord does he have no mercy toward a man like himself and yet pray for his own sins if he himself being flesh maintains a wrath who will make expiation for his sins in chapter 28 verses 3 4 and 5 we heard these passages we harbor unforgiveness towards our brother our sister and we come to the lord asking for god's mercy and forgiveness but how can we experience god's mercy and forgiveness if we continue to harbor unforgiveness towards our brother and sister so our lord in the prayer our father says this he has put this condition the only condition that is put there is this forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us yes the quality of forgiveness experience of the forgiveness of god in our lives depends on the quality of our forgiveness and this is a condition that we see in the gospel in the our father yes my dear brothers and sisters we need to forgive unconditionally that doesn't mean that forgiveness is very easy forgiveness is cheap no sincere forgiveness is always costly it is confrontational it is always painful no sincere forgiveness is cheap but it is possible through the anointing of the holy spirit we are called my dear brothers and sisters to imitate the forgiveness of god yes in the letter to the ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 we see be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another as god in christ forgave you colossians 3:13 says forgive each other as the lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive the model the guarantee of our forgiveness is this colossians chapter 3 verse 13 forgive each other as the lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive we need to forgive as jesus has forgiven jesus is forgiving love has given us the kingdom of god jesus is forgiving love has made us children of god when we forgive someone sincerely we participate in the attitude of god we become children of god as my dear brothers and sisters remember as i said real forgiveness is always costly but remember when you forgive through the merits of your forgiveness god will act in not only in your life 
in the life of the one who has offended you. We have a beautiful example in the Acts of the Apostles. We know when Saint Stephen was being stoned to death, he knelt down and prayed like his master, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Who was the witness there to his martyrdom? It was Paul. What happened? What was the reaction of Paul? We know the witnesses laid his cloak at the feet of Saul. And from that day onwards there increased persecution. And Saul was on the way to Damascus with a letter for arresting all those who followed the way of the Lord. And on the way he is knocked down and is converted into Paul. Many spiritual writers would say, commenting on this incident, the forgiving prayer of Stephen gave an opportunity for God to enter the life of Saul and transform him. In other words, by the merits of the forgiving prayer of Stephen, God acted in the life of Saul and transformed into the greatest missionary apostle. As when we pray, when we forgive someone sincerely from our hearts, God will act there. God will act in our lives. Let us not go on nurturing grudge in us, unforgiveness in us. That will only help the evil one to take control of our lives. God has called us to live the life of the children of God. And the children of God are called to love and to forgive unconditionally. Let us surrender our lives to the Lord. Let us remember what book of Sirach says in chapter 28 verse 6. Think at least about your death or end of your life and cease from unforgiveness. We all have to go back to God. If we are not reconciled with one another in this world, we cannot get reconciled with God in the world to come. Let us ask the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of love, to give us the grace to forgive everyone unconditionally. It is only through the grace of the Holy Spirit we can forgive sincerely. May the Lord bless us. May the Spirit of God fill us with His love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.